See, some manufacturers do. Okay. Some manufacturers do, some manufacturers don't. So you gotta understand, like like guys have a hot steam system boiler, like especially in the city, and they have they want to have they have a basement, and they you know finish the basement off, and they want to have heat in the basement, like I said, baseboards. So the reason why you can cheat is because the water line, let's say, the water line is halfway over here, right? Yeah. So we know the water line is somewhere right around here. Let's just use this as a reference guide. Yeah. This is the water line. So from here under, we know it's water. From here up is is air because it's making steam. So I can put a pump, as long as it's submerged under water, to make it like a single hot water loop to heat up the basement. What they don't tell you is, and guys tend to forget, is that that circular pump is designed for hot water. What did the guys tell you about, about, about steam? You're making steam at 212 degrees. Those hot water pumps or hot water system is between 160 to 180 degrees. That's the difference. So what happens with those pumps? They tend to burn out after a while. It's not, that pump is not made or designed to make, you know, to handle a temperature of 212 or superheated water, like 300 degrees. It's not, it tells you right in the box. This design is the parameters, 160, 180. But you do get away with it after a while, but the pump tends to just go out maybe after a year, six months. Something you love to lucky maybe all over a year. Understand that it's not designed for steam because the, te because the boiler was originally designed for steam. You're just kind of just cheating and you're piggybacking off to get heat for the basement. So you get away with it to an essence. But there is a way, a proper way to do it. You can actually put in a coil to make a proper hot water system. The reason why guys don't do that is because it comes down to one thing, money. Because, you know what I mean? You, like, in other words, this thing is a coil as in the heat exchanger. Right. This heat exchanger can do anything. I can use it for domestic water or I can use it for heat. That's actually the proper uh -huh. way. That's uh -huh. really the proper way of doing it. But most people don't want to do it that way because of the issue of money. So, no, I'll just put a loop and put a, you know, put a pump, put a, a relay, and a thermostat quarter of the day. But on the steam, on the steam system, the, the, the water gets like money. So after a while, it starts getting into that pipe of the, the, the loop of the heating system and it starts, you know, corroding. And when it starts corroding, it starts corroding the internals of the, of the pump or whatever, the pipe. The pipe maybe is three quarters, now it's half inch. Now, if it's a hot water system, it's only water all the time. So, you you know, it's clean water. Well, I want to say 100% clean, but it's cleaner. Meaning it's not creating mud because the reason why the mud buildup is happening is because on the steam system, it's, 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 it's with the ambient air. The air vents, the air vents, <coughs> The air vents inside the radiators, they're introducing air. The air that we're breathing is the water. So you, know, you have scaling. When you mean, the minute you have a seal, a pipe, or any sort of, sort of something sealed, like in this case we're talking about water, you're, it's not touching the air that we're breathing. It will never, it's not supposed to. I mean. Right. You know, otherwise, it won't be, it, we'll have issues with air. Right. You follow what I'm saying? Yeah. If you, if you were touching the outside air, we always have air in the system, you have air bubbles, the heating system will never work. Right. So it has to be sealed. So that's, that's, the, that's the difference. But I'm just explaining this to you guys because, you know, People tell me, oh yeah, I put this uh, circular pump. I put it uh, like six months ago. And that water, that so the steam is at 212, right? You said the steam itself is at 212. Correct. The water be below is the water that's boiling, that's also at 212? It's not hotter. The water, okay. Yes. You're okay. making steam. You're making so that's why steam. you're saying you don't use that water circular. You use a separate circuit altogether with a heat exchanger. And now no, you can right, run that, it at right. 80 rather than. Correct. That's the proper way of doing it. It's just that people don't do it. Because the one, the guys just don't know what they see. You've been taught a certain way. Yeah. That's not really 100% the right way. We just, it's called cheating. Okay. And you're cheating a little bit, but do you have a downside of cheating? Listen, you can't just cheat and be 100% on the money. You're cheating, but there's a downside the to it. The only difference would be just to use a heat exchanger as opposed to just Correct. plugging right into the boiler. Cor correct. But guys don't guys do not do that. A couple hundred bucks for a heat exchanger? Well, you'd be, no, it'd probably be more. Oh, I mean, yeah, maybe the, the coil. Yeah, the coil. They have one that oh, goes cool. directly to the mm -hmm. boiler. Yeah. What happens to the older mm -hmm. boiler? They don't have that. You don't have access. They actually have an external heat exchanger. External, okay. But that heat exchanger costs you easy, 12, 1500 bucks. Oh, it does? Yeah, they're expensive. Oh, yeah. Okay. So okay. people don't want to spend that type of money. Oh, shit. Just so, for the heat exchanger. Just for the heat exchanger. Remember, it's all made out of Copper. So that heat exchanger, like on a heat exchanger for something like this, mm -hmm. it costs anywhere between like three to five hundred dollars. <throat> from an external heat exchanger, the way it's designed, because it's designed, it's designed to compensate for boilers doesn't have a, a, you know a place to put a heat exchanger. Mm -hmm. So they give you another you know, alternative, but you're paying for that. So you know that heat exchanger that you can put inside here, I get from the manufacturer three to four hundred dollars. The other heat exchanger, it, it's like kind of universal, but depending on the application you want to do. But yeah, I can do it, but it's going to cost me twelve, fifteen hundred dollars. So somebody, a homeowner. Or even, oh, that's a lot, that's a big difference. So let me do it the other, other way. There is, you know what I mean? It, 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 there's really only one way to do it, it's the right way. But are people doing the right way? That's what I tell, try to tell my students. And I tell you guys, now listen, in a, in a school, it's a controlled environment. But when you're out in the field, there is no control environment. There is nothing controlled. Everything is like, listen, what you'll see in this house, it'll be completely different on this other house. What you see, like I tell you, we know in electricity, we have black is the, is the, is the color we use for like a hot wire, and, and white is for neutral, let's just say. 
It's an example. I went to a job the other day and I show I was showing Jericho. He was with me. He's like, Lou, this all the same colors. This black and every single one. You're right. That's why your knowledge is very important to me because by me showing you how to use a, a voltage meter and you understand what's hot and what's neutral, you're gonna identify with the meter. Say, okay, this is neutral. This is hot, or this is a, you know, is this a common leg or not? That's what you're gonna know. Yeah. It doesn't matter. That's what guys do in the field. You know what I mean? Like guys just do all kinds of stupid things in the field that yeah. you know what you see in the school. Oh yeah. Great, and the, the school is controlled. I'm telling you what the problem is, and I'm showing you. But in the field, that completely changes. Yeah. In the field, you got—I mean, you see it. You're in the field. You know what what's supposed to do, well, what's supposed to happen, yeah. doesn't happen. Yeah. Guys cut corners. I mean, I can see and tell you many stories of what the guys do out in the field. Huh. And listen, I do that only when to to get them heat for the night. Improvise. Listen, there's kids in the house, or there's, you know, in the building with like a senior citizen home, you know, something like that. I, I, I could bend the rules a little bit. I'll bend the rules a little bit because you know what? It's, in this case, it's an emergency. And I want to tell them, listen, you know, we got kids, we got families, older people, other people are hospital. So you know what? I can't leave them down with no heat or hot water. It's very important. Listen, you have no idea because we're not, we're not in that business on the medical side. Mm. But I have clients that, listen, they have no hot water. Literally, it's a life and death situation. Mm. I, I swear to you. This one guy that I met up, he has a skin condition. It's very rare. But he has to have a certain amount of temperature on, on the water, meaning it cannot be cold, it cannot be too hot, but he has like some sort of like a, I don't want to say a fungus, but like he has a disease that infects his skin. It has to be a certain temperature. And if, if, if it's too cold, he's in pain. If it's too hot, he's in pain. And he has to take at least a, a minimum between three to four showers, or his mother bathes him like three or four times a day. And that's how sensitive he said, listen, it's, 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 that's, that's how important it is to him to have hot water. And it cannot be too cold or it cannot be too hot. Yeah.